Hi folks, in the previous video I showed you how we could use the Bellman equation to solve a specific version of the Ramsey model with specific parameter values and functional forms by using guess and verify. So we guessed the functional form for our value function, we found the optimal choice of the capital stock given that guess for the value function, and then we plugged them both in to the Bellman equation and verified our guess and found the appropriate coefficients for the value function. But what if we don't know functional form for V? The Bellman equation is an operator, which means it's just a function of functions. It takes in the function V of K prime and spits out another function V of K. And the Bellman equation has a nice property that it is what's called a contraction mapping, which means that if you plug in some guess for the value function on the right hand side, what you'll get out after applying the Bellman operator is another guess for the value function that is closer to the true value than your initial guess. And if you use that new value as another guess and apply the, op the Bellman operator again and continue iterating, eventually you'll get out a fixed point. In other words, by plugging in some random guess initially and iterating on that guess by applying the Bellman operator over and over again, eventually you'll reach the true value of VK. So let's do that. I'm going to start with a guess. I'll call it V0 because this is my zeroth guess. And I'm going to make a truly stupid guess, which is that the value function is just equal to zero. Clearly, this is not a correct guess. We know what the correct guess looks like. We just found it in the previous video. But I'm going to plug this in nonetheless. So plugging in my initial guess, zero, on the right-hand side, I'm just going to get beta times zero. And so the Bellman equation says that my current utility is given by the log of consumption. But there is the, the continuation value. So all the utility I get after the current period is zero by assumption. Now, let's find my optimal choice of capital given this guess. Well, clearly K prime only appears once here and it appears negatively. If I reduce my consumption today and, and save more, I'm going to reduce the utility I get from consumption today. Now, ordinarily, I would be able to use those savings later on and consume them later on and get some utility then. But I'm assuming with my guess that the utility from that is zero. So I'm assuming there's zero here. So obviously my optimal choice of capital here, and I'll call this K zero prime, because it's my optimal choice of capital given my zeroth guess, my optimal choice of capital is gonna be zero. Okay, now let's plug in my initial guess and my optimal choice given that guess back into the Bellman operator into the Bellman equation. And what I'm going to get out, I'm going to use as my new guess, V1K. So plugging in this K0 prime, I can get rid of the max operator here. And I just get the flow utility is the log of K to the alpha, because K prime is zero. And then this beta times zero is obviously just zero. So this is my second guess for the value function and it's equal to alpha log k which is still incorrect we know what the true value function looks like it has a constant term and the coefficient on log k here is is not quite right but it does have the same functional form in other words it's proportional to the logarithm of k so even after just one iteration value function iteration has proved fruitful in that it's it's now allowed us to 
uh, find the, the correct functional form for the value function. We don't know that yet. We only know that because we already found it in the previous video. Um, but as we keep iterating, I plug this V1K in as my new guess, uh, we're going to see that uh, eventually we get the true value. So let's, let's plug V1K into the Bellman equation again. So now instead of having beta zero, I'm going to use my new guess for V, V1, K, alpha log K. Let's find the first order condition again. So taking the derivative with respect to K prime gives me this. This should be prime, of course. And my... Optimal choice of capital, given my second guess for V, is going to look like this. So this is still not the correct policy function, as we know, because we know from the previous video that the true policy function is going to be equal to alpha beta times output. But it's certainly closer than the policy function that we found from the first guess. Okay, let's plug this K1 prime back into the Bellman equation. Okay, and simplifying this a little bit, collecting all the constant terms. And now collecting the terms proportional to the log of k. We have something that looks like this. Now, I'm not going to bother with the constant again, just because that's a, a little tedious, but the, the term that is proportional to log k, we now have looks something like this. So it's some constant plus one plus alpha beta log k. Now, if I plug this into this uh, v2 in as a new guess and find v3 I'm going to get something else and if I keep doing this I'm going to get v4 and v5 and if I keep working out the policy function I'll, I'll get k prime 3 and k prime 4 and if I do this ad infinitum I'll get something like this and you can kind of see the pattern here hopefully v infinite k if you like is gonna there's gonna be a constant term and then we're gonna get plus alpha times one plus alpha beta plus alpha beta squared plus alpha beta cubed and so on log k and if you remember your geometric series you'll know that that is equal to alpha over one minus alpha beta which is the correct coefficient of proportionality on log k for the true value function. So you know, I haven't worked out the constant, but you can take my word for it, or you can uh, work it out yourself. And you'll see that if you keep iterating on the value function, you do in fact get out the true value function after iterating enough times. What about the policy function? Well, k prime infinite of k, Again, you can hopefully see the pattern here, alpha beta over one plus alpha beta there and after the first one. And if you keep doing it, you get something that looks like this. Alpha beta plus alpha beta squared plus alpha beta cubed and so on in the numerator. And then in the denominator, 
one plus alpha beta plus alpha beta squared plus alpha beta cubed and so forth times k to the alpha and again if you know your geometric series you'll know that this is just equal to alpha beta which is again the correct value of the policy function so this is a bit tedious if you do this by hand of course but this property of the Bellman equation and this approach of value function iteration is going to prove very fruitful in finding numerical solutions uh, to the Ramsey model and other economic models uh, using dynamic programming when we're not so fortunate to be able to get neat analytical solutions. And in the next video, I will show you uh, a, a MATLAB program that uses value function iteration to solve the Ramsey model in that exact way. Thanks very much. I'll see you in the next video.